Welcome to Restoring Your Life with author, teacher, and minister Linda Lang, an outreach of Life Application Ministries, helping people one heart at a time. Visit us at lifeapplicationministries.org or call us at 530-620-4641. Now here's Linda. Let's open up with prayer before we get started. Thank you, Lord, so much for what you're doing and that your love is here. You, your truth is real. You are real. Father, you say that we must believe that you are and that you're a rewarder of those that seek you. And I'm believing those that are watching this program are seeking you. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, for meeting them, for touching them, for being with them as we continue to uh, on our journey together, Lord. Uh, in your name we pray. Amen. So, uh, today we have a friend, her name is Kathy Watson, and I have uh, had the pleasure of meeting her about a year ago. She actually helped do uh, worship in my um, conference this last uh, October, and so I want to introduce her. So, Kathy, I want to ask you uh, to share a little bit about, you know, you, your husband, I think mm -hmm. you're married, and you have uh, a family. Yes. Kids, yes. And, um, mm -hmm. and a little bit about your ministry. Let's start there. Okay. Well, I've been married for going on 49 years. Oh, this year goodness. is 49 years. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I got wow. married when I was 15. My husband was 18. And wow. uh, so we've been together a long time. And when um, my husband and I came up through the, a lot of our background was drugs and, you know, all these things that were, mm -hmm. you know, not good for you. And then we uh, started going to church, mm -hmm. and we both came to the Lord at the same time. We got saved in a little four-square church. Really? And our kids, I have two children, mm -hmm. and my daughter, right, she's 45. My son's going to be 43 this this week. Wow. And uh, so back in, in 1970. Matter of fact, his birthday's on his my birthday. His birthday's birthday. on your birthday. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so we came to the Lord. We were just at the end. I mean, we were totally at the end of our road. I was at the end of my road. I was suicidal. I was on drugs. I, you know, just mm. just a mess. I was depressed. I just did not want to live. I wanted to just run away from my family. I actually had considered just taking off down the street. Actually, I did go down the street one day. My husband came and picked me up. Mm -hmm. He said, "Where are you going?" And I was just so destitute. And so he said, "I think we should start going to church." And we started going to this little four square church. And we went there for like six weeks. Well, one Sunday, the pastor said, does somebody want to receive Jesus? And we both raised our hand, <laughs> yes. Wow. So right in the little prayer circle, we received Jesus. And it was just as if this weight, this tremendous weight, you know how you, you heard the song back then, was said that the weight of the world was on his shoulders when you come to Jesus Christ, that weight lifts off. Right. And I literally felt the weight just lift wow. from my shoulder. The sin, the weight of that sin, of that pain and the de depression. And the D word, the divorce word, was big in my mind. And I remember immediately that D word went away, the divorce word. And all of a sudden, the love of God started to, it, the Bible says that his love is shed abroad. And, and I didn't understand that, but the Holy Spirit began to, he did, he shed his love abroad in my heart. So immediately I started, as I received the forgiveness of Jesus Christ sure. for my sin, I immediately started to forgive my husband. And I didn't even understand how, how I would look at him mm -hmm. and instead of want to leave, I would all of a sudden, I was like, I, I kind of like this guy. You know? <laughs> I like what I saw in the change, how Isn't Jesus changed. Wow. And so then I, I, I just began to really forgive and we begin to really fall in love and of course we were discipled and trained first of all in the church God sets you up you know when he puts you somewhere sure. was all about family mm -hmm. it was about marriage it was about how to raise your kids and so we just we were like a sponge Some, someone said once to us you two were just like you were sponges and every time the church doors were open, we were in the church. Mm -hmm. Every time there was a meeting, we were in the meetings. We were just like sponges and like these little birds, you know, <laughs> feed me, feed me. I want more. I want more. And so we just saturated ourselves uh, with the things of God. He, we began to be discipled. We felt a drawing and a pulling on our spirit. We didn't even understand at that time that God had called us oh, for ministry. And he called us from the foundations as he calls us. From the foundations of the world, God calls us. And he has a purpose yes. for who we're to be uh, in his kingdom. So little be known to us, we started being trained. You know, God just set us up. And, and within a year, my husband and I were set in as leaders over married couples. 
Oh my goodness. And singles. We were called the pairs and spares. That we were leaders <laughs> over pairs and that. spares. I mean, we were just saved for a year. Uh -huh. But then I think about that. Well, you were so young, you were saved. But what about the woman at the well? You know, when she came to Jesus, she dropped her water pot and she went out and became an evangelist. <laughs> you know, so well, how much training did she need, right? right exactly. To go out. And so we were just young and, and we were on fire. Uh -huh. And there was just so much zeal. We had like lots of zeal. And we were just so on fire for God and just wanting to do whatever uh, God wanted us to do. And within three and a half years, we went and, and moved to another place and God began to teach us about worship. He set us in this other church to really teach us uh, how to worship. We, we went to Bible school. Uh, we, we were just, again, inundated with the Word of God. I have to stop here for a minute. I remember you saying something to me a while back when we first met, how, how you started playing the keyboard. Yeah. You yes. gotta tell that story. Yes. Well, when we were sent out uh, to start our first church, uh, <laughs> God raised us up, and and we were ordained, and and our pastors, uh, thank God, they were treasure hunters, and they saw uh, the gift and the call of God on our life, and began to mentor us and train us in uh, the areas of uh, counseling and pastoral mm -hmm. areas and things, and and so anyway, I was I loved to sing. I mean, I I played kind of plunk on the piano, you know, plunk plunk plunk. I always wanted to and had a desire to. I even took lessons when I was a kid, but couldn't finish because sure. of financial reasons or whatever. I, I couldn't finish that. So I had the desire, though. God put that desire in my heart. And I sang. I sang in the choir, led worship, you know. So when we started our own church, we had a piano player. And she got up, you know, she left. You know, mm -hmm. She just, boop, I'm done. And so I had this little studio piano. My husband goes, oh my goodness, who's going to lead worship? And we're like, who's going to lead worship, you know? And I said, well... I heard the Holy Spirit say, you're going to lead worship. And I go, oh, well, I led worship. No, you're going to play the piano. So I told my husband, I says, I just heard the Holy Spirit say, I'm going to play the piano, and I'm going to lead worship. And he laughed, like Sarah kind of, like yeah. Abraham laughed, yeah. you know, when Sarah said they're going to, you know, they're going to have a baby. Yeah. You know? And so he always says that I laugh like that. And But he said, I know that you, you hear from the Lord, mm -hmm. so I'm going to trust the Spirit in you. I'm mm -hmm. going to trust that God is speaking to you. And, but then also I had to apply myself then. Mm -hmm. Okay, he poured out the anointing on me. He re, he established and released it, the call to do this. And then, then I began to apply myself. I began to uh, get books mm -hmm. and study, uh, to play and to worship. You know, I need to add here. I think that's the good uh, thing that she just brought up. The first thing that she did, though, was she stepped out in faith mm -hmm. without knowing how it was going to turn out, if she was going to make a fool of herself, nothing. She knew the call. She did what she was going to do in her strength. And then in her obedience, the Holy Spirit agreed with her. And then she continued doing her uh, study and, and, and developing to excellence to where she is today. I'm telling something to somebody right now. Aren't we saying something yes. to somebody right now? That's right. And that's where we begin. We yeah. begin stepping out on faith. Just yes. like Peter, you know, uh, Jesus said to Peter, Peter, get out of the boat. Yeah. You know, get on the water. And of course, the water is the word. And so Peter began to walk and he walked on the word with his eyes on Jesus. So yes. when he sunk was when he took his eyes off Jesus yeah. and he, he sunk because he was not walking. We got to walk out on the word that God gives us. He gives us the word and to know he placed it within us. We have a lot of people have a lot of desires and they think, oh, I'd like to do this and I'd like to do that. But we need to begin to start stepping out in that. Mm -hmm. As Holy Spirit leads you, and yeah. God will always meet you. Just like uh, you had said in a previous program that, um, you know, the 10% you give, and God comes and he gives the 90. Mm -hmm. You take one step, yes, God will right. run exactly. run all the way to you, mm -hmm. and it just takes one step and just one step of it's faith. Like, it's just like the prodigal, right? That's right. The father didn't go chase after him. The father mm -hmm. waited till he saw him in eyesight. And that little step of faith that the boy did, then the father did the whole 90%, grabbed his kid and did all kinds of things. See, mm -hmm. sometimes we're sitting around waiting for God to do everything. We, we have to still agree with God and say, Lord, I'm ready. Oh, okay, you're ready? Cool, here I come. You know, but we have to be in agreement with him. We have to know right. the word to be able to agree right. with the word. And knowing his voice and, yeah. and knowing that God is leading you and God is never going to tell you to do anything that is that you're not going to be able to do. In other words, if he tells you to do something, God is going to, going to provide, he's going to give you, uh, equip you. And that is really a part of the ministry that God has called my I husband and I say, to. Yeah. He, he called us, he said to, to us, 
through prophets, through the prophetic, and also in, speaking in our own spirit, in our own prayer time and study time. And that's important because we, we're studying, we're praying, we're learning to listen to the voice of the Lord, and God brings confirmation. And he said a long time ago to my husband and I, he said, I called you to be treasure hunters. Mm, I, I called you to hunt the treasures that are in other people. And I want to show you through your life's experience, through your walking in my spirit, yes. as an example, I want you to teach others how to walk in my spirit. And that's possible. To walk right. in the spirit. Matter of it's, fact, it it's, is, possible it's possible on February 20th? Yeah, February 20th. February 20th. Uh, we've um, been doing equipping classes. Uh -huh. uh, uh, Lord spoke to me to start the equipping school and many, many words to start school. And so it's I started the Equippers International Ephesians 4 and I also have a site on, on uh, Facebook. It's called Equippers International Ephesians 4. And I started writing on Facebook and just bringing some teachings and invited other people to bring teachings that were equipping teachings. And then he went one step further. Now he says, I want you to start and do a school. Okay. And so we started out with worship. We started out with worship and spirit and truth. And we brought that teaching forth. And then now we're on a series of walking in the spirit. And of course, the first thing we uh, taught on walking in the spirit was the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, we taught in Romans 8. We taught in Galatians 5. Uh, we taught about how you walk in the Spirit, how it's possible to walk in the Spirit, mm -hmm. but we have to walk in the fruit and learn how to cultivate the fruit of God and the fruit of His love. He's speaking uh, big on love, and God is really, He always has spoke big on love, you know, uh, but because right now God we're in love. a season. Yes, yes, God is love. God is love. I mean, we're he can't talk, talk about anything that's else. That's right. <laughs> but we're in a season right now where He's re really releasing uh -huh. his revel the revelation of His love. Mm -hmm. Uh, to his people and to the world, mm -hmm. because it is by their by our love that is how people are going to know right. that we are believers is by the love of God. Mm -hmm. So it's it's uh, the equipping is teaching people how to know who you are in Christ, right. your identity in Christ. Because when I came to Christ, I did not know, and I'm still learning about my identity, mm -hmm. but I didn't know that I was born for this. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was born to. Uh, worship God and to give Him glory. I didn't know I was born to love. I did not know I was born to be loved. Yes. I did not know who I was. And I'm learning all the time who I was, who I am. And God is wanting to teach His people. Okay. And uh, so we're really looking forward to this. And this is a one day, we do one day all day training. And, that's and they're intensive. Do that once a month, right? We're doing this once a month. month. Yeah. We've been doing it uh, once a month. This is our third one. And uh, so we're very excited. We're going to also teach on spiritual warfare. This mm -hmm. is the next one that we, we're going to move into. And it's all about walking in the Spirit. It's sure. about learning how to walk in God's Spirit, right. how to overcome, to know we are already overcoming. That's right. But to know how to walk into that. So then also, too, coming up in April, you're having your annual uh, Chosen mm -hmm. Women's Conference. Tell us That's a little right. bit about Chosen Women's and how that got started. Well, Chosen Women, back in uh, 19, actually 1998, sitting at my table, I was praying and asking God uh, for what He would want for the women. Uh, that was specifically how it started. What is your heart? And I know there's many other women's groups, but I wanted to know what my place is and what right. God was calling me to specifically. Mm -hmm. And he, he told me the word, he said, wired. And so I wrote it down and... He said, Women in Revival Equipping Disciples. Mm -hmm. And that's where it started. And then he began to, to give me a strategy of what, how, what he wanted, how he wanted me to facilitate the meeting. And in 1999 was the first, in our church, home church, was the first wired meeting that I had called For Such a Time as This. Mm -hmm. And God just began to bring together all the workers from mm -hmm. in the church and out of the church, because it's always also been about unity, like sure. knowing about the body of Christ. It wasn't just our church, but it was who he wanted right. to bring in from other parts of the body to bring this about. Mm -hmm. So we started the conference in 1999, and every year I, would, I had an annual conference. Then about five years ago, he expanded the ministry to Chosen. Okay. And I literally saw a, a banner in the sky with the word chosen on it. Getting ready to do meetings in Guatemala. My husband and I, we've traveled to Guatemala since 201. Ministry over there and done uh, missionary work there. And they asked me to come and do a women's conference. And they wanted to establish a women's ministry in Guatemala. Mm -hmm. And so they asked me, what would I do? So I chosen was the word I got. And so I saw the banner 
But then I also realized it wasn't just for the women, but God is saying because we're his chosen yes, generation, right. all. Oh, okay. So it was chosen families, chosen women, chosen men, chosen. But this was a specific theme. And so he added this to the ministry and expanded it, Wired and Chosen Women. And then the ministry of chosen women is established in Guatemala in different areas. The beauty of this is how when God calls, again, you step out and you do. Sure. Uh, this friend of mine came from Guatemala to one of the chosen women. Uh, conferences here. She said, I really feel like God wants me to start a ministry there in Guatemala. I said, wonderful. Go to your pastor, share with him your vision that you want to do the ministry yes. and have him. He can write me. I'll write to him. I'll give him the vision because I really believe that this vision is coupled with working with the local church. It's not yes, my ministry right. that's yeah. out there somewhere right. in left field. It's exactly. a ministry that helps to build the body of Christ. That's right. And I believe that's what the fivefold ministry is called to do. It's called to equip. It's called to build, to come alongside a ministry sure. and complement the, the, the church. That complete the church. It's not to complete. complete that's right. Church. It's yeah. completion. Yeah. So she wrote the letter. And when we did that uh, installation, so to speak, we prayed over her. There were 15 churches, pastors and leaders that came to that uh, gathering to say yes and amen mm -hmm. and to establish that ministry in Guatemala. Yes. Then it went to families. She's, she's doing ministry with chosen with families. It has really nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. It has to do with the obedience as all. She and just called someone and to be it. To and facilitate. you are helping Helping to facilitate. Up, up, yeah. And so this has been this has been a wonderful uh, time, a ministry to see fruit. This yes. is the other thing, to see fruit. Like, where's the fruit, you yeah. know? Uh, th I want to see fruit. And mm -hmm. fruit that's going to remain. Not that's just, right. I want, God wants to see the fruit. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, and the fruit that's going to remain. And there's a team we have about um, 12 ladies mm -hmm. that are on the uh, cho Wired Chosen team. We pray together. We, we get ready for the conference and facilitate and we're coming up in April yeah, we're coming up to this uh, one April here. 8 and 9 God created and he always gives me a theme he'll say it's kind of like having a baby every time I've had the conference I say okay God do you want me to do another one because I just don't yeah, want to do I know a, another what you mean. conference I do the same thing every year <laughs> so it's like a baby it's like yeah. oh I push and, and it happens and yeah. then he gives me the theme and this year uh, he gave me God created and in His image, mm -hmm. and um, and you're going to be speaking yes, at I'm the conference. I'm it, very yeah. excited for you to be with us and such richness of the Word of the Lord, and that's what God is looking for that excellence, excellence, and and you bring in your ministry brings such an excellence to uh, to the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. and the other speakers, their excellence. There's excellence. You've had uh, Lita Lockhart on your show. There's excellence that she will bring forth. There's excellence uh, for Lori, Lori Long, who is another part of the, she's a part of the chosen team. And she's going to bring excellence in her journey uh, with, for, through worship and the arts and the girls' praise and worship and our team. There, there's excellence here. Yes. And God is calling for excellence. And he wants to build us up and he wants to teach us. And that's what it's really all about. And that's our heart. That's my husband and I. That's our heart. It's been our heart. We pastored for 30 years. This has been our heart's mm -hmm. desire. We're not pastoring at this time. We're doing some other things, facilitating. Still, we're facilitating and equipping. Well, you're building up. Traveling, the, the, building up. You're building up the disciples. That's right. You're building up That's and right. making disciples of all That's men. Right. That's what the Bible says. Go out and make That's disciples right. of all men mm -hmm. and women. Amen. <laughs> and knowing that this was what I was born to do. And we need. you need to know what you were born to do. I, at the meeting a couple weeks weekends ago, the Walk in the Spirit, I was up speaking and I was saying, this is what I was born to do. This is what I was born to do, to share this, to do this. Mm -hmm. When I'm leading worship, I'm not just leading a song service, but this is what I was born to do yes. from the heart of God. Yeah. This is not something I thought up, an idea I had that was a good idea because there's sure. lots of good ideas. But I know this is what I was born to be mm -hmm. and what I was born to do. I know I was born to love and I know who I am in Christ. And God wants that for all of us. Have I arrived? No, not by any means at all. But I've had glimpses of the excellency yes. of Christ in me, the hope of glory. And I know that it is through him and by his spirit only. That's right. That uh, we were born to love. You know, scientifically, that uh, this minister did, the, she's a scientist and she she's a Christian. And she teaches... Uh, now and it's been proven that we were born to love yes. scientifically. Right. I mean, it's That's proven, right. isn't it? Proven in the Word of God. 
Because God is love. That's right. But scientifically. Well, you know what? It reminds me of a story that was a, a is real quickly here um, of a baby that was born, mm -hmm. and um, it but it had to be in an incubator because uh, it was sick. So mm -hmm. the parents couldn't touch the baby. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, but they would pray for the baby, and you know, you have to have a, you have to nurture a baby and hold it and, and, and everything, so it'll be okay uh, when it grows up and whatever. Well, the little girl ends up being like four, four years old, and they're at a park, and they're watching the brother's football game. And the little girl says, Mommy, Mommy, do you smell that? And he, she goes, No, I don't, what, it, what, it must be the flowers in the area. She goes, No, no, Mommy, I smell him. <sighs> she was being touched by the father in that incubator mm -hmm. and that was the love that mm -hmm. he poured into her as a baby and yes. she survived that ordeal that she was going through mm -hmm. she didn't have to be touched by human hands she was touched by the father's heart mm -hmm. and it's that love that's that love that that um, you know we know mm -hmm. we're his disciples by his love, his love. in yeah. us I was just sharing the other day if I have a minute to yeah. it just got quickened to me how um, I had an experience like that I was in counseling and I went through inner healing and uh, and I was with the counselor and she was telling me that that she felt like I needed to know God really loved me and that he's loved me from the beginning and I saw a picture I see pictures lots of times when I'm ministering in that way and uh, I saw a vision and a picture and it was so clear vividly like as if um, you and I are sitting here and sure. I see you I saw Jesus and I saw a baby in a, in a nursery and he was wrapped the baby up very tightly, very you know, very securely, and he began showing to show me and speak to me that this baby was me, mm -hmm. and how much. And he take the baby and he put the baby to his heart, and he was putting me to his heart like this, and then he took the baby, which was me, the picture, and he lifted the baby up, and he lifted the baby up, and he gave the baby to the father. Yes. And so he took me and he gave the baby to the father. So Jesus was dedicating me, and giving me yes. to the father. Yes. Then he took the baby and he handed the baby to me. Oh. And he said, Take the baby. Yeah. I took the baby and he said, Now I want you to love the baby. Yes. And I began to hold the baby. What it was Which me. was you? It was me. Yeah. And I oh, I probably used three boxes of Kleenex. Yes. Because I felt the love of God that I had never experienced before and knew that he loves me. Yes. You know, when we love ourselves, we're loving the Father. Amen. Amen. He is love. He is love. Yes. You know, the, the conferences that we hold and the conferences that she holds, it is stimulated from the heart of God. And the heart of God is love. And so we want you to leave our conferences that you visited with the Father, that you actually experienced his heart for you yes. because you know you can go and sometimes I'll go to a conference have you ever had people in your conferences where you see them kind of sitting in the outskirts you mm -hmm. know the yes. ones that are in the front row yes. they're like eager and hungry and then you see the, the yeah. few in the back mm -hmm. just kind of almost have their mm -hmm. foot out the door you know mm -hmm. ready to leave or something those are the people those are the fringe I call mm -hmm. we need to grab the fringe the ones mm -hmm. that are are it or you know when Paul was preaching and how there was a guy sitting in the window and he fell out and mm -hmm. he died well, that person was on the fence. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 we're going to keep an eye out for those that are sitting ready to fall out and die. <laughs> that we have to rise from the dead. Um, and that's what we want to do. We want to make sure every individual that comes through those doors that we represent God, that we mm -hmm. embrace everybody, yes. not just the front three rows. That's right. That we reach beyond the front three rows and grab and let them experience for themselves. People have fallen through the cracks, I yeah. believe, in the church, mm -hmm. uh, quote, church, um, you know, the, the sphere. Yeah. Too much have fallen through the cracks, and God sees you. And I, I think this is specifically to someone. Do you need to know that mm -hmm. you might feel like you've fallen through the cracks and that you're not seen? And you might yes. feel like what Linda has said, that you're on the outskirts and you're just on the fringe. Yes. But God's loving arms right now are taking you, and God is leading you by, and drawing you yes. by His loving kindness. And He wants you to know that He purposed you. Mm -hmm. He purposed that you be born. He loves you, and He is taking you into Himself, to His heart. Listen for a moment uh, to the heartbeat of God, yes. because His heart is beating for you, and His love is for you. And you're not going to fall through the cracks, but He's picking you up, 
and he's going to help you to stand. You might not feel like you can stand right now, yes. but God is going to lift you up. He's going to hold you, and he's going to, he's going to carry you where you need to go and what you need to do. Trust him right now. Just let, let him love you. Let him love you. So, Kathy, I want you to go ahead and pray for yes. the listening audience, yes. would you please? Yes, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your great love, and we thank you for that drawing, Lord, as you're drawing us closer each day, Lord, to your heart. And I pray for those that are watching today, Lord God, I pray for those that they would know the drawing of your love, that you're leading and guiding them and drawing them to you, Jesus. As we lift up the name of Jesus, your word says that you uh, will draw all men unto you, all mankind. And Lord, I pray right now for those, Lord, who need to know who you are in their life, either, either if it's for the first time that they didn't really know who you are, Jesus. Maybe they know of you, but they don't know you. I pray for those that would just say, I want to know you, Jesus. Yes, I want to know you. And I want that love, and I need that love. So, Father, we pray for your forgiveness. We pray, God, that those that need to know that forgiveness would begin to cry out and ask you to forgive them and to repent and to say, God, help me. I need you. You know, this is the best prayer you can pray is help. So, Father, we pray for that. Help right now, Holy Spirit, that you're the helper. So we pray for your love, your love that overcomes, your love, Lord, that conquers every sin, that conquers every darkness. So all darkness has to flee because of the love of Christ being made manifest in their life. Father, as they turn their eyes upon Jesus, yes. turn your eyes upon Jesus, I pray, and embrace the touch of the Father's love through Christ, your Amen. Savior today. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Thank Amen. you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm hoping that these programs will encourage you and strengthen you. And, and if you want to contact me directly, you can contact us. You know, the information will be at the end of the program. But my heart is to help you one person at a time. So if you want to talk to me personally, please do so. Give us a call. Send an email. Whatever you'd like to do. But until next time, God bless you and your day. You've been listening to Restoring Your Life with author, teacher, and minister Linda Lang. Restoring Your Life is the outreach of Life Application Ministries in Mount Ockham, California. Visit lifeapplicationministries.org or call 530-620-4641 or write Life Application Ministries, P.O. Box 165, Mount Ockham, California, 95656. Visit us on Facebook at Restoring Your Life with Linda Lang. Join us next week and begin restoring your life.